Hey everybody, my name is Brian and we are going to start with Android programming. So if you head out to developerandroid.com, you'll see that the newest version in this may date this video is actually Android 7.1 called Nougat. Um, Android has some really funky naming conventions. They're actually kind of comical, but once you get used to them, they're, you, know, you appreciate them. Android has actually um, grown throughout the years. It has changed several times. So in other tutorials, you will find that um, you'll follow along with the tutorial and it just won't work. You know, things are depreciated, things no longer exist, something's broken, whatever. Um, this video and this series is being started in January of 2016. Um, I will try to stick with the core of Android. So hopefully a lot of, if not all of the things that we discuss won't get depreciated in time because they are the core of Android. There are some prerequisites. The first thing you need to do is go out to developerandroid.com, click on develop, and you will see this Android Studio, and there'll be a number here. Um, to date, it's 2.2. Um, that will obviously increment with time. But go ahead and download Android Studio. It is the foundation IDE of what you need to make an Android program. Um, sure, you can use another IDE, but this is directly from Google. It makes sense to use their tools. And there is a lot of resources out here. Um, you can watch all these videos. They even have, uh, you know, training. You can go through a full course on Udemy, which I actually tried for a while, but like I said, it was outdated. So I got to a certain point, and then I had to flip over to Google and say, "Why isn't this working?" And then, you know, somebody who knew much more about it than I did would say, "Well, it's stupid. You're using the wrong version. Use this and that." And it got very confusing. So um, that is actually why I'm building these tutorials because the resources that I found out there really weren't all that up to date. So go ahead and download Android Studio. Um, I'm not going to install it. In I cannot talk. I'm not going to cover how to install it because it can install on almost any operating system. Um, I have this installed on Mac, Linux, multiple versions of Windows. Um, most of the installs went fairly flawlessly. Um, it's fairly simple. There's a couple little gotchas that I'll cover later on in this video. But for the most part, it just worked. Now, on my Linux box, there are a couple dependencies I had to go ahead and install. But a, a simple Google search, you just kick out the error message onto Google and gave me the command line that I needed. Um, I'm not going to give you the command line because you may not have the error. You'll have a different version of Linux. But if you're on Linux, I think you're probably smart enough to figure out what to do. All right. The other prerequisite, other than Android Studio, is a fundamental knowledge of Java. Uh, now, I know a bunch of you are going, oh, come on. This is actually a beginner's tutorial. Um, you don't need very much Java at all. So if you have no Java at all, go out to YouTube, type in Void Realms Java. Void Realms is all one word. Void Realms, by the way, is also the name of my website and the user group out on Facebook that you'll hear me talk about quite a bit. And wow, somebody copied my videos. I guess those were popular. <laughs> Anyways, um, you basically go out to the official Void Realms Java, and you can go out to my channel and learn a lot of other languages, but I've got 28 videos out there, and it'll take you from knowing nothing about Java to actually being able to write some fairly good programs. Um, they won't be, you know, highly complex or anything like that, but it'll give you a fundamental knowledge of Java, and it maybe take you a day, or if that, to go through them. They're pretty short videos. Once you have a fundamental version, fundamental understanding of Java and you have Android Studio, go ahead and crack open Android Studio. And I've actually got some code opened up. And I'm just going to kind of walk you through what the IDE looks like. It'll look a little different. You'll have to make a project and then it'll open up to this. But there's also some other things that you're going to need to do right off the bat. And I don't remember if the installer asked you for it. I know on, I think it was Windows, it actually did. But I think on Mac it didn't and I had to go in and do it myself another reason why I'm not covering the installation process. But it's a fairly simple IDE. You've got your menus across the top. You've got your toolbar. And then you have, you know, your project structure or your code structure, depending on which view you're in. And then you have your tabs for your different files that are open. And this little guy here called breadcrumbs, so you can find your way back if you were on a file, whatever you needed to do. All right, so before you do anything, you need to do a few simple steps. Um, one of them, if I can find these, is da, 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 here it is. You need your Android Virtual Device Manager and your SDK Manager. And there's a couple other things like you know project structure and help, but really what you need to focus on is click the SDK Manager. And you can see how I've got partially installed or update available. 
these are the actual Android versions. And you can see it goes all the way back to 2.1 Eclair. And these, if you've ever heard of like Lollipop or Jelly Bean, that's the actual names of them. But they, each one has a number. So like version 4.1 to 4.3 was called Jelly Bean. You know, that's kind of how they kind of group that. Instead of calling it 4.1, 4.2, they just call it Jelly Bean. Um, I think somebody correct me if I'm wrong. This is the internet, so I'm sure somebody will correct me. But uh, they switch names based off of what they depreciate. So things that were in Jelly Bean are no longer available in Cat Cat. Um, or they added so many features that it might as well just be called something else. Uh, but anyways, you go out to this SDK. And let me show you how to get there again. It's this little air, down arrow over the Android guy. SDK manager, where you can hunt and peck through the menus and get it. And you'll want to download, I stick with kind of the newest. Um, now there's a middle ground here. Um, it's hard to really explain. But if you go with the oldest, there aren't many devices out there using it. And if you go with the newest, there aren't many devices out there using it. So you kind of stick with the middle of the road here. Um, that'll be your biggest user base. But you see how you have what's called an API level. Certain parts of Android have a minimum API requirement, meaning if you're going to use certain things, you need to have a certain level of API based off of what they've added or what they've depreciated. There's also this revision number that's somewhat important too that shows you the revision of that SDK. Now, if you wanted to download one of these, you just click it and you see a little icon appears and it says OK or apply. As soon as you do that, it'll start downloading. I'm not going to do it because it's time consuming. I would recommend for learning purposes, you do the newest versions. Um, I, I kind of do one or two versions, sometimes three. That's because you want to know the latest and greatest tools because by the time you master those tools, they may be in production use or they may be on the verge of being depreciated depending on what they were. Um, it's always a catch up game when you're learning something new, especially in computers. Now for production, I would stick with middle of the road. In this case, um, on January of 2016, it's uh, Android 4.3 Jelly Bean. That seems to be one of the bigger user install bases. Actually, it might actually be Ice Cream 4.0. Um, but you understand what I'm saying. For learning, go with the newest. For production, go with the middle of the road. Typically, unless you're doing some legacy work, you don't really mess around with the older ones. Um, so you're going to want to check off you know, a couple of these and just hit apply. And as soon as you do that, it'll start downloading and installing these. You need the SDKs installed in order to work with these things. And here is why. After you've downloaded that, you'll go into what's called the Android Virtual Device Manager. And you see I've got some devices in here. Now, what is a virtual device manager, you may ask? Android programming should be done on an Android device. I have, you can't see it, but I have my Android phone right in front of me. And that is my main device that I program on. However, this phone is limited to the SDK that's currently running on it and the make, model, and manufacturer that it's built with. So you can do virtual devices, meaning you can actually create a virtual phone which to play around with. So we're going to create one, and you can pick from all sorts of things, from TVs to wearables to phones to tablets. And each one of these is kind of... Uh, you know, different. You got to just kind of read it. It gives you the size over here, the dimensions, things like that, the manufacturer. Uh, you know, like you can take a Google Nexus. I actually have one of those in the other room. And you can take a Nexus S, something like that. And that was, it's a pretty big phone. And you can take a small little 3.3. So I'm just going to grab like a, a Nexus 4. You can say next. This is where the SDKs come into play here. You have to pick what SDK you want that phone to have. You can see I've already got some of them downloaded. Now, if you've skipped the previous step, you can see there's a download link. So you can actually download like NuGet. Um, I'm just going to say Marshmallow because I already have it installed. And I'm just going to click Next. And we'll just give this a name. And we'll call this, um, what's the name of that really crappy movie I watched? Oh, yeah, Killer Clowns from Outer Space. That was like the worst movie ever. It was so bad, it was actually kind of funny. But then you can control some basic properties like the startup orientation and some advanced settings that you really don't need to get into at this point. All right. Now, there's my killer clowns from outer space, and you can see how there's a little start button here. So if I start this, you'll see that Android Studio starts doing some stuff in the background here. 
uh, starting the Android virtual device killer clowns from outer space, which is probably not a great name. I'll end up changing that. But point being, you will have the ability to run emulators. And on these emulators, you can run your code. So if you don't even own an Android device, you don't even have a cell phone, it takes a while for these emulators to start up. As you can see, you now have a virtual phone right in front of you that you can run your code on. Now, there are some limitations here. Um, this may change in the future. It may be changing as I speak. It may actually be you know, completely wrong what I'm telling you, but uh, my understanding is that Android emulators do not allow some of the more basic things like Wi-Fi access. So if you're writing a program that relies on the internet, you're not going to really be able to do much in the emulator. Um, but it's, you know, it's a full-fledged phone, right? You can see you've got a browser and all sorts of stuff in here. And we can actually say... And ta-da! I mean, you've got internet. But if you're doing something on your local network with Wi-Fi, I'm sorry, it's just not going to work. Um, there's certain things like that, that are little gotchas. And you've got this little toolbar here that you can control your emulator. And you can click more to get into some of the properties here. So you can actually give it uh, like a latitude and longitude. Um, you can give it a cellular. You can give it a battery status. You can give it a phone number. That, by the way, is not my phone number. So please don't go calling that because you're going to get some, you'll probably get some engineer at Google's going to say, who's this? Um, it's kind of funny I left that in there, though. You know, I kind of want to call that now just to see. I'm going to call that after this video just to see who picks up the phone. It's probably like a, a Google, thank you for using Android. You can give it a fingerprint. You can give it virtual device sensors and all sorts of other crazy settings. Um, emulators are convenient, but they're slow. They're very, very slow. Um, the appropriate way, and actually let me, let me kill that emulator. And let me kill this. Um, let me grab my cable here. If you hear some background noise, I'm woefully unprepared. I'm, I told myself I wasn't going to do any programming today, and then I was like, hey, let's just make a tutorial. So I'm going to plug my USB cable into my computer and then plug my phone in. And there is a trick to this. You'll have to go into what's called developer mode. And I'll do that in a future tutorial. But basically, when you launch this now, this little launch button over here, you'll see we have a connected device. That's my actual physical phone sitting in front of me. But I also have all these other virtual machines that I've made. There's, you know, Killer Clowns from Outer Space, which, did I misspell outer? Oh my god, that's embarrassing. Um, point being, you can use your physical device or you can use an emulator. But if you're going to use an emulator, you're going to have some limitations. Uh, before you can use the emulator, you need your SDKs installed. If you have your physical phone, you're probably good on the SDKs. You'll probably need them installed just so that you can program against them. Because in your actual scripts, when you make an Android program, where is it? You'll have your compiled SDK version versus your minimum SDK version. So you'll need to have those installed for the compiler to know what the heck you're doing. Whew, that is a lot of talk. So we're going to go over the fundamentals of an Android program, something that almost every Android program will have. You can see there's this Android manifest file. We'll crack this open. Um, this is basically just an XML file that outlines what your application does and what permissions it needs. So when you download something off Google Store and it says, hey, it needs the internet or it needs to control the Wi-Fi or the network, that's how you actually define those privileges. And you define what activities and intents are. We'll cover those in future tutorials. Just know f at this point in time that there are things out there called activities and intents. Um, but that's how you define them. And you would also define uh, receivers for broadcast receivers and services, which is code that runs in the background. Um, the structure of these programs is just pure Java. Um, I shouldn't call it pure Java. It's not really, truly Java. It's like Google's kind of take on Java, but it's still Java. Um, so you'll have imports. Um, you'll have classes and, you know, listeners and all sorts of fun stuff. So every little idiosyncrasy that Java has is going to carry over into Android. So if you're not a big Java fan, you know, you will get used to it. I'm not a big Java fan myself, but I've actually gotten kind of fluent in it. Um, you'll have your Java folder which is where the bulk of your code goes. And then you'll have, you know, example instrument test and then, you know, example unit test. I haven't really played around with those a whole lot. You'll also have your 
Android monitor down here, which is where all your debug statements go. And you can see the actual device in real time, the GPU and stuff like that, because I have it plugged in. And you can make filters. So let me, no filters. Yeah, see, there's the actual data pumping out of my physical phone right now. So if I were to just, let's see if I can, yeah. All I did was unlock my phone and all that stuff starts streaming out here. And you can filter it so that only your program goes through. And you'll have debug and all sorts of fun stuff. All right, from here, you also have a resource folder. Now, resource is kind of like a catch-all, meaning if it's not code, it's a resource. Did I just say if it's not code? Yeah, that's the Canadian in me coming out. My family's actually Canadian. Um, so the drawable folder, this is where, well, your images would go. And we'll cover how to get those in there. There's a little trick to it. As with everything, Android, there's a little trick. Layouts, these are your actual activities. Um, let me show one here. So this is what the end user would actually see. This is how you would put your buttons and your spinners and your checkboxes on a screen. You can lay it out either by dragging and dropping or by doing the actual XML. Um, personally, I'm not very... I'm not an XML god, let's just put it that way. So I typically drag and drop things on, and then if I need to, I'll go into the actual code and tweak it. But usually I just drag and drop. Um, I dare say 90% of what you need can actually be done by drag and drop. And there is a lot of widgets out there. I mean, just tons and tons of widgets. And you can create your own. It's not very hard. Um, so just know that we're probably not going to cover all these, but we will cover a good chunk of these, at least the ones that you're going to need to do a basic application. All right, so... Then you have this MIP map. This is your launcher icon. That is the actual icon that would go on your, I don't know what it's called, the Android screen that you have all your programs on. I don't want to call it a desktop because it's not a desktop. The Android screen, launch screen, that's what I think that's what it's called. Um, so you'll have your own custom one. And these can be different sizes, different pixels. You know, some of them are, you know, more granular than others. And then you have raw. Typically raw are just raw data files. I have MP3s out here because my program plays sound. Um, don't worry, internet. These are royalty-free sounds and royalty-free pictures. And then you'll have values um, such as strings and dimensions and all colors and all sorts of stuff that you really should use. But to be honest, I really haven't because I just am very lazy. Uh, but I will show you how to use all those things. All right. So that, in a nutshell, is Android Studio and the structure of an Android program. Now, before you go, there's a couple other little things you should be aware of. Um, go out to Facebook and search for Void Realms. There's a group out there. We have 1,170 members. Wow, 21 new people? This thing just keeps growing and growing. These people are from all walks of life. Um, I think the bulk of them are from C++, from the tutorials that I've done in there. But I've asked a lot of Java and Android programs. And I mean, within, in some cases, literally seconds, I get an answer back. In some cases, it's like maybe a half hour. If it's a really complex, sometimes it's a day. But usually people are really fast and everybody just kind of helps out. So request the uh, membership to the Void Realms group. And also visit my site, voidrealms.com. I'm going to start posting the source code for this and other tutorials out here. I'll actually have a little drop down in here that says Android, and I'll have all the source code out there. Um, so also, if you want the source code for the Java tutorials, you can just go out there and go to Java, and boom, they're all right here. Well, that's it. I hope you found this educational and entertaining, and I will see you in the next video.